60 in our northern counties, lower 60s in the Triangle. We may see the wind shift that will bring in that colder air delayed just enough that we reach upper 60s to around 70 in Fayetteville and Clinton. Much colder tomorrow morning with low temperatures in the mid-30s and gusty winds up to 30 miles an hour. So some pretty nasty wind chills as you wake up tomorrow. News that breaking news is in Wayne County where there has been a report of a shooting and a standoff situation. Let's go straight to Megan Glova in the WRL Live Center. Megan. <laughs> Yeah, Julian, we're also told that this there's a barricaded person at this scene. Take a look. We just received this photo, Brookside Way in Pikeville. Now, we don't know much, but it does appear that the sheriff's office is there. Highway Patrol as well, and it looks like those officers out front have their guns drawn, focusing on this brick house with red shutters there. Again, we are trying to find out more very early in this investigation. But Carly Haynes is on her way there now and will bring you any updates we receive from her here in the Live Center. Ah, very frightening situations. Thank you, right? Thank you, Megan. We will check back in with you a little bit later. Well, President Biden signed the 1.2 trillion federal government funding bill into law today. That's after the Senate passed the package overnight. Now, this is a lengthy fight over funding critical government operations. We're talking about things like defense, homeland security, labor, health, and also education. These operations are now funded through September. And as Rob Kirkpatrick reports, hardline conservatives in the U.S. House are not happy about it. Just two hours after the midnight deadline, Congress passed a funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. This funding agreement between the White House and congressional leaders is good news that comes in the nick of time. When passed, it will extinguish any more shutdown threats for the rest of the fiscal year. President Joe Biden signed the legislation Saturday and praised the bipartisan bill, calling it, quote, good news for the American people. The $1.2 trillion funding bill addresses a slate of critical government operations, including the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Labor, and the Legislative Branch. This is a good result for the American people. In terms of standing up for their health, their safety, their education, their national security protection, and of course, above all else, their economic well-being. But the fight is far from over, as hardline conservatives signaled an unwillingness to approve the legislation. It's a bad day for the country, for anybody that votes for this. They're funding this, uh, killing this country. The agreement could also cost Republican Mike Johnson his job as House Speaker. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene on Friday filed a motion to vacate him as House Speaker. I filed the motion to vacate today but it's more of a warning and a pink slip. This was our leverage. This is our chance to secure the border, and he didn't do it. Green's resolution to oust Johnson will hang over the GOP conference as the House begins a two-week recess. Rob Kirkpatrick, WRAL News. Goldsboro police say a person was found dead on the side of the road. Investigators believe that person died after being hit by a car. The body was found along Central Heights Road. Police are still working to find out more about the circumstances of the person's death. Well, here's some more information for you on this story we're keeping track of. Breaking news right now, and that breaking news comes out of Sampson County, where a bad crash on Watershed Road sent a driver to the hospital by helicopter. The car was overturned in a ditch. The scene is now clear. We're reaching out to learn more about the cause of the crash and the driver's condition. A car crashed on I-540 near Six Forks Road early this morning. Now, this is video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker taken around 4 this morning. You can see the damaged car in the ditch by the highway. One lane of 540 was closed for nearly two hours. We have reached out to Highway Patrol for more information about the crash and to learn if the rain was a factor. The Raleigh Police Department gave out this today. Free gun locks at Triangle Shooting Academy today. The firearm training facility had an event for its eighth anniversary. Officers also answered questions about responsible gun ownership. Safe gun storage was the topic of our most recent WRL documentary. Learn how to request a free gun lock and watch unsafe North Carolina kids dying from gun violence on WRLDoc.com. There is a growing concern as measles cases rise in the United States. The infectious disease has now been identified in 17 states, though not in North Carolina. The CDC is reporting the number of cases so far this year has surpassed what was seen all of last year. Just think about that. Most cases being reported are in children 12 months and older who are unvaccinated. Doctors say getting the shot is the biggest game changer to keeping you 
and your kids safe. Once you receive the first dose of measles immunization, you're 93% protected. Once you get the second, which is the booster, you're 97% protected against this um, disease. I think an informed parent is the best parent. So you educate them, um, give them information, and let them make the best decision for their child, which is hopefully to immunize them. Um, this vaccine is not new. Let's talk about measles symptoms. They typically include fever, cough, runny nose, and skin rash that can develop into more severe complications, including pneumonia and brain swelling, which can potentially be deadly. Highway 12 in the Outer Banks is partially closed this weekend, and here is why. Take a look at all this. You can see some of the ocean wash over the roadway that's causing the closure on Ocracoke Island. Sand and waves are making driving conditions dangerous, if not impossible, on the Outer Banks Main Highway. The ferry service between Hatteras and Ocracoke is suspended because of weather. Both Highway 12 and the ferry service are expected to reopen after noon tomorrow. Hundreds of Duke Energy line workers gathered in Wake County today to find out who's the best of the best. As WRL's Eric Miller reports, it's a competition that brings both recognition and the chance to hone life-saving skills. In New Hill Saturday, a forest of poles, a herd of hard hats. Welcome to the annual Carolina Lineman's Rodeo. Oh, the rodeo's a blast. The event brings together more than 50 teams of Duke Energy linemen from North and South Carolina, from apprentices to pros like Tyler Maddock. So the rodeo really, it scratches the itch, the competitive itch. At the rodeo, Maddock and hundreds of others complete a series of challenges designed to simulate emergencies these crews face when winds howl or disaster strikes. Every day is a challenge because every day is different. What they transfer from this, this friendly competition is real world skills that really matter in the real world when you have a power outage and when you need these crews. The linemen are judged on speed, agility, and safety. That last point key in a dangerous field. And again, the safety of our linemen are the most important thing that we care about at this company. There's also bragging rights on the line. Winners today will go on to Kansas City and the International Linemen's Rodeo in October. Because, you know, you want to see how good you are against the best in the world. But for Tyler Manick, it's more than that. In 2017, he was diagnosed with cancer. And they gave me six weeks to live. I was on long-term disability for 15 months. But uh, the Lord healed me. I'm back at work doing what I love to do. Passion and professionalism all laid on the line. In Raleigh, Eric Miller, WRAL News. What an incredible story and a great competition, right? Duke Energy spokesman Jeff Brooks says rapid population growth brings challenges as they serve an expanding number of customers. He also says the public's tolerance for outages has really gone down over the years. But outages are coming with greater frequency as a result of more major storms and more traffic accidents on more crowded roads. Glad they're out there doing all they can to keep us going. Well, Raleigh runners gather today to raise awareness for a rare disease. Hear about the goal of this run for Rare 5K. Plus, there are two big lottery jackpots still on the line tonight. How much is up for grabs? And when you can find out if you won. Anthony. Oh, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of money there, Julian. Somebody's going to be happy. Our weather's looking pretty good out there right now, making some people happy, probably with temperatures in the 60s, close to 70 around the triangle. Don't get used to it, though. We have some big-time changes on the way. We'll talk about when we could see mornings close to freezing coming up after this break. Ah, look at this gym we have right in our backyard, the Azalea Gardens. What a day to be out there. A little cloudy, but get on out there and enjoy the day. Well, it seems like we say this every Saturday, but those two giant lottery jackpots are still up for grabs and they're getting even bigger. Tonight's Powerball grand prize is $750 million with a cash value of nearly $361 million. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is even bigger, $1.1 billion with a B dollars. The cash options there is nearly $526 million. Now you can watch both drawings live on WRL at 11 p.m. An NC State fraternity is breaking the silence surrounding suicide. Sigma Pi held his Break the Silence 5K at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary this morning. The event is a part of the fraternity's rally to for suicide awareness and prevention. The mother of a former fraternity member who lost her son to suicide thanked the group and reminded them that they are never alone. 
Sigma Pi raised more than $10,000 for Foundation of Hope. The money raised will go toward research for mental health illness. Now, WRL is also a proud sponsor and supporter of the Foundation of Hope and a longtime sponsor of the annual Walk for Hope. An incredible race returned to Raleigh this morning. This race right here. The National MPS Society held their Raleigh run for rare fundraiser at Lake Crabtree. Now, it's not just a race. The event provides solidarity and support for those battling rare diseases like MPS and ML. The organization is dedicated to supporting people affected by these rare genetic disorders for which there currently is no cure. And so our goal at the Society is to fund research, to support advocacy efforts in legislation, and also to provide wraparound family support um, for any of these families and children with one of these diagnoses. Today was the organization's 50th anniversary. The rain didn't stop the community from coming out to support the event and raise awareness with every step. The Shades of Green Fashion Show returns to a sold-out crowd. The Durham chapter of Lynx Incorporated held its annual fashion show today. Now, there were over 600 people in this crowd. It was a sold-out event. It featured designs from boutiques from North Carolina. Now, this was the first in-person show since 2019. Those in attendance were decked out in red to promote heart health for women. And look who was there. WRL's Lena Tillet was the MC. I know it was so much fun out there. Oh, we know you know this. We're in the midst of March Madness, and Wolfpack fans are savoring something they haven't experienced in nine years. A showdown in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Now, this is a live look at fans gathered to watch the game at Sammy's Tap and Grill on Avon Ferry Road. The pack will take on the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. That's later tonight. The game starts shortly after 7 p.m. I thought that place is going to get really, really back tonight. Anthony, it is calm out there tonight. It is. Yeah, I'm glad, Julian, for all the people celebrating the game and just watching out there. The rain has pushed out. I think we're looking pretty good here as we go into tonight. I want to talk about the where we sit here on radar. This is kind of a loop over the past 12 hours. We, of course, started this morning off with some rainfall, especially off toward eastern North Carolina. We got a little bit of a break and then a lot of a break here for many of us. And then the chance is still going to be there for just a quick spotty shower this evening. I do not anticipate big time issues, though. I think most of us are going to be just fine. We take a look here at how how much rainfall we've seen over the past 24 hours or so. Generally speaking, about a half to an inch and a half of rainfall. It does start to taper off there in that green color. That's less than about a half an inch or so. Most of the rainfall, like I said, we are nice and, and done with that for now. Just a stray shower still possible tonight. A lovely picture there in Apex. Good evening to all of you. Appreciate you watching this evening. Lots of uh, dry conditions out there as far as the roads are concerned. Currently, they do look a lot better than where they may have started this morning. Check out temperatures, too. My goodness, we're at 68 currently around the Triangle, 66 in Fayetteville. Everyone is pretty comfortable currently, but you notice some of that blue starting to show up there on the map. That is behind a cold front that's going to bring some colder weather in for us, and it's going to be a shock to the system by the time we get to tomorrow morning. 35 degrees. That is all we're going for around the triangle 38 in Fayetteville 37 in Clinton 36 in Goldsboro here by the time we're up and out on our Sunday the kind of factor that will make those feel a little bit worse are, are going to be our wind speeds we'll talk about that here in just a second there's Futurecast here into the next couple of hours. You see it trying to pinpoint a light area of rainfall or two. I can't rule it out completely. It's going to be very limited coverage. And once we get closer to about 10 o'clock, all of those chances are gone. It's just a stray hit or miss shower tonight. There's early Sunday morning. We have clear skies, sunshine for the entire day tomorrow. It's going to be nice in that regard, but deceptive. You'll be inside thinking, oh, it looks nice. Step outside and get smacked in the face with some colder weather because of those wind gusts up to about 30 miles miles an hour in the morning. They progressively start to go down there into the evening, probably 10 to 20. This is what it will feel like, though. 25 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Even by lunchtime, getting closer to noon, we're talking feels like temperatures in the low to mid 40s. So it's going to be a cool day, but all in all here, compared to the rainfall we saw today, we are not going to see that tomorrow. Pollen levels, though, yeah, they're not going to be seeing much of a relief. Thankfully, today they did come down. They go right back up to high Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I think even Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of those days are probably going to be pretty high for us with uh, the tree pollen, our biggest culprit currently. We talk about where we sit over the next seven days, so pretty calm for us aside from it being breezy into tomorrow. We're at 58 degrees. That will be the coolest day of the next seven. We're at 64 on Monday, 66 on Tuesday. Our next rain chances and models are all over the place on this, but it 
does look like they'll come in Wednesday and Thursday. The best chance is they're joining Thursday afternoon, and then we get warm there in the next weekend, right around 73. So that'll be nice here yeah. after a cool down tomorrow. 66 on Good Friday. Yeah, it's hard to believe we're already almost to Easter, but I think it'll be a good weekend. All right, thanks, Anthony. I'll take it. Let's go to Casey and Lewis. And guys, the Lady Wolf Packs, they handle business today. Yeah, Julian, the pack continuing dancing. Of course, they're going to play Monday against Tennessee UT Chattanooga, though, giving them all they can handle early going, though, Lewis. The second half, the Wolf Pack started the pull away. We'll show you how they did it and hear how they're preparing for a matchup against 6 seed Tennessee next in sports. Many on social media had this game as one of the number one upsets coming into the NCAA Women's Tournament, but the NC State ladies not having any of that. They took care of business on both ends of the court, beating Chattanooga 64-45 as they advance to the second round of the NCAA Tournament. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sports. Casey Hitz alongside Luis Fernandez inside Reynolds Coliseum, where it was rocking just a little bit ago. Now, yesterday, Luis, Westmore said, you know, we're proud that we get to host the first two rounds here, but you can't take it for granted because nothing is guaranteed in this tournament. Even if you're a top 16 team, Casey, you get a little bit of nerves when you get in here for that first round game. But like a lot of NC State games this year, it leaned on the defense and closed late in the fourth. Let's take a look at the highlights. Inside Reynolds Coliseum, the friendly confines have been good to the pack. 18-game winning streak in the NCAA tournament with the box out in front early. Madison Hayes bookends a 9-0 run. We go to the end of the second quarter. Sanaya Rivers drive, pivot, pull up. Good at the buzzer. She had 16 points, stayed up 26-17 and a half. Isaiah James, zero points in the first half, but she explodes after the break, filling it from downtown. James, five three-pointers in the second half. She finished with the game high, 19 points. State advances, final score 64 to 45. Head coach Wes Moore, not too happy they started the celebration without him after the game. He was, he was upset because we put our name on the uh, board without him. But we say, you know, when we went on Monday, you can you can put it down there yourself. So, um, but no, he he's not the happiest with the outcome of the game. But he is happy that we, of course, won. So we'll enjoy it for now. Watch some film tonight and be ready for Monday. You know, being at home, it helps so much, um, especially from last year going to Utah. And then it's just like, well, I'm not familiar over here. So um, I think being home is really good to us, especially all the fans being there today. A lot of the fans were there today. Okay, I think the first shot okay let's wind it down calm down and let's get ready for the next possession and I feel like we were fine from there let's go ahead and turn now to the men's basketball team for NC State a battle of double digit seeds in the south region in Pittsburgh Oakland the 14th seed facing NC State the 11th seed just to put this into perspective a bit this would be the first time NC State gets to the sweet 16 since 2015 Head coach Kevin Keats likes to say, hey, wherever mentioned within that 74, 83 time frame, things are looking pretty good. How about this? They've won six postseason games in a row, win one more. And the only longer streak in one single season in the postseason, the 83 season for NC State. The great thing about us is we've gotten stronger in every second half. And, you know, I just think the, the buy in and the energy that we provide through our, our program and our energy that we give on the you know, on the bench. I think it really helps our guys in understanding what the opportunity is. And there's really no secret sauce. I just think our guys are in good shape and, and mentally believe that they should be playing in the game. We've got a good one right now. North Carolina up 32-28 over Michigan State. RJ Davis lead the way so far with 10 points. We'll have more on that one coming up later on, Julian. All right, it should be some fun tonight. Plenty of games to watch. Thank you, guys, and we will see you later tonight. And we'll see you later tonight, right? Thanks for joining us this evening. We'll see you a little bit later. Take it easy out there. Have a great evening.